Hi, welcome to Mission Driven Monday. Today I'm here with my friend, Courtney Geyser. Courtney and I went to college together at the University of Evansville in Evansville, Indiana. She is two years younger than me. And honestly, we really haven't talked in the last 20 years, but in 20 years, she has done a lot. She is a gifted artist and she lived in Maui for a time. Now she's in Maryland where not only is she a hairstylist, but she also works in a life crisis center uh, in Maryland. And she's really doing a lot to impact her community and really change the way that we talk about child abuse. Uh, I wanted to interview Courtney today just because I've been following her on social media like we do for so many friends that are from our lives in the past and I've seen what she's done and I just love the message that she shares. I love the life that she's living and I wanted to share the best of her with you today. So thanks for being with me, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. <laughs> You're welcome. So every week we ask the same three questions. Today is no different. And I'm gonna start with our first question. Courtney, can you tell me about your proudest accomplishment? Um, yes, well, I would say first and foremost, my proudest accomplishment is becoming a mom to my two beautiful daughters. Um, I'm sure a lot of people out there as yourself who are mothers would agree that that's probably at the top of their list. It is um, a life-changing thing. Um, with that came my, what I would say is my second um, proudest accomplishment, which is, uh, find, uh, being the founder of Pinwheels for Protection, which is a child abuse awareness campaign that I started here locally in Salisbury, Maryland. Um, uh, after a traumatic experience that my family went through, um, I realized that I could not change what had happened to us, but what I could do is raise awareness for other people, um, look for signs, look for um, things that uh, maybe they wouldn't have thought to look for and faced with the situation like we were. Um, Back to Pinwheels is a, um, like I said, a child abuse awareness campaign. And what we, um, our goal is, is to just empower uh, victims to become survivors, to get the word out there in schools, in the community, that um, it's okay to talk about uh, child abuse. It's okay to tell if you, you or somebody else you know is being abused. Um, that there are resources out there that can help you, and um, we want people to be connected with those resources. Um, and with this, with this program, I am um, affiliated with the Life Crisis Center, which you mentioned. Um, I started out as a volunteer doing the pinwheels with their backing, and then now I am on staff continuing to do the pinwheels. I think the last year we I'm sorry, in the last three years since it started, we've raised over $60,000 for child therapy program here in a community for victims of abuse. That's great. Um, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I read one time the statistic that um, one in three girls will actually be sexually molested at some point in their lives. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's, that's a huge number. Um, and we don't want to talk about it. We want to think, like you said, we were talking before I hit record. You were like, you think that this won't happen to you. You can't right. imagine that that would be your life. Mm -hmm. um, is there a message that you would say to people? Or is there something, like you said, I, I teach people to look for the signs. Mm -hmm. uh, what are a couple of the signs that people should look for if they think that their daughter or their friend um, might be being abused? Um, well, there are some changes in behavior that you, um, that normally might not be so alarming, but, um, could indicate something, say, um, in like withdrawing from social situations, maybe not wanting to be part of a family gathering where, um, somebody in particular is there suddenly they don't really want to be around that person. Um, a lot of times art is a good indicator. Um, I find you see a lot through um, children's drawings. Mm -hmm. um, there are obviously physical, some physical indicators too um, that a lot of times though, unfortunately with the sexual side, they're not as obvious, although there can be more severe things if there, of course, if you um, have any indication of trauma or anything and any of it, you know, private body parts, obviously that would be a red flag, um, which does um, bring an important point is one thing we do say is a general rule of thumb is um, to children, anything that is covered by your swimsuit is something that nobody else should be 
touching. Um, and I think that's an important thing to remember something simple for kids to you know, remember. And yeah. it's okay. No, you don't need to, sh those parts are your part. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, um, obviously over the last few years, you've been learning a lot, just dealing with the population that you deal with, the clients that you serve, uh, what's happened in your own family. But what are you learning right now in this season? Um, well, with this, I would say I, um, it's kind of, I guess, leads me to what I learn every, every day. Um, one, is, one thing is that I, uh, I've learned that we can't control what happens to us. Um, all we can do, and this applies, like I said, to every day. You might have a good day, a bad day, but a lot of that is out of control, but it's how, what we do with that. What mm -hmm. we, our perception, how we take that and whether we use it, change it for the better, it's up to us. So we can't control what happens, but we can um, control how we respond to it. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as um, also currently, I had just gotten done, as we talked before, I had just gotten done um, being part of a campaign committee for our local state's attorney. I learned so much through that experience, and um, that, again, is an extension of uh, the situation that happened with my family as the person that was running was also represented us in our um, in our trial. And I, going through that gave me a new respect for our, our legal system, the way our, um, our election system works and how important it is that everybody takes the time to vote and your voice does matter. It can, and don't ever think for one second that you can't do what you put your mind to and that people will listen. You just have to get it out there. Um, and it, that, was really a positive experience for me. So I'm kind of working on what I've learned there and carrying that onto whatever, wherever that goes, I don't know, but um, just not being afraid to. Yeah. Um, um, that's sorry. Kind of, no, well, I was just going to say, that's been one of my favorite things, honestly, about getting older is I find that people kind of find what they're passionate about mm -hmm. and they're willing to talk about it and to fight for it. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing what people care about come out because it might be something that I could care about too, but I have to know, right. I have to know about it. Right. And so, you know, you seeing this with somebody that, you know, you're, you're helping her campaign, you know what her platform is and you were like, I believe in this and I want other people to be educated about it too. Um, I just love that you're doing that because without people like you, uh, without people like me or people that, um, that really are making a difference in their communities, we'd all just be sitting around, you know, like bumps on stumps doing nothing. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. When you, when you, the key, like to what you just said is when you see something that you truly believe in, it's not, it's not hard to get behind it. It's not work. And that's what I found with this whole situation is nothing. When I come every day to work, it's, it's, it's because I believe in what I'm doing. It doesn't feel like work. And that, that's the key. I've heard that before. Like once you find your passion, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to feel like you, you can't wait till retirement because right. you're going to enjoy it every day. And that's kind of what I found. And with, with Jamie, who I just supported, um, one thing that I like to point out with her is that she wasn't, um, it, she wasn't a politician. It, everything that she talked about, she stood for. And that was why it was so easy to get behind her. And I saw it in action. So good to see that there are good people out there that do good things yeah. just because they want to do good things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. All right. Last question. Courtney, I want you to tell me about your aspirational self. Uh, when you look into the future and we talked about this a little bit before we went live, you know, we talked about how when we look back, we see, Oh my gosh, I've done all these things and looking in the future is so much more difficult. But when you look into the future and you see the future Courtney, Tell me about who you see. Who is it that you want to be? Um, I would say that I want to continue to um, continue to be passionate about life in general, whether it be um, you know, go, getting involved in whatever my kids are doing at the time in school, whether it be um, developing a new project, something for life crisis, or getting on another campaign. I just I want to continue to wake up every day feeling passionate with a purpose, um, big or small. It just is a good feeling. Um, I, I would like to say that, um, I would continue to, um, I wouldn't have, if you had asked me again 20 years ago, if I had been able to handle something 
some of the things that have affected me, I would have said no way would I have reacted the way I did. Um, but I am, I, it has been such a learning experience that I hope that it brings me to a point where in the future, I know that I can, I can react with strength and I have the ability to handle it. And, um, how you do that, I don't know, but at the same time that I can do it. <laughs> I, well, I think that's one of the most important lessons. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and I guess one of the last that the um, last thing that I would say is that um, I would hope that it, no matter what the message is that people get from either pinwheels or um, just as the the way if a lot of people have asked me how I handled um, the situation with my girls from a parent perspective or a mother perspective, I would hope that whatever I've been able to, to explain to them makes a difference and to continue to, to have that personal touch with people going forward so mm -hmm. and be approachable so that it, or that message never, never dies. I mean, hopefully it will help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one thing to be passionate, but it's another thing not to run over people in the process. And it sounds like you have a good balance. <laughs> Try. <laughs> that's a, as you know, it's a struggle every day to find the balance. But again, you, you, you try trial and error and you get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing that you said, and I really hope that this is encouragement to people, is that you said, um, you know, I hope that I'm never afraid to try new things. I know that I can do it because I've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's such an important thing. I think it's such an important lesson that sometimes we're afraid to try new things because that we're afraid that we'll fail. And maybe we will, but mm -hmm. more than likely, no, whether we succeed or we fail, we're going to learn something. And so the next time that we try it, we go, okay, I know I can go a little bit farther because I've already gone this far. You know, right. I already did that. Um, there's so many things in my life that I'm, I would have never thought that I could do. But now looking back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I did that. I, I right. did that once, so maybe I can do it again. Yes, and you can take what you, and if you do fail or the mistakes you do make, you say, okay, that's something I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it that way again, but now you know and you're wiser going into it, and next time you do it, it's going to be that much better. And um, just don't be a, a, kind of in a nutshell with everything. Don't, uh, with the sort of the motto behind the pitch for protection, just Break that silence, whatever that means, in life, you know, as far as, this, but just in general, break that sense. You're passionate about something, do something about it, get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Courtney, thank you for being here today. Just a little thank fun you. fact. Courtney is actually uh, the roommate of my sorority little sister. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah. That, and then I think, um, well, I guess I was trying to, I was thinking about the, the other day, but were you, I guess that was, I was thinking somehow we had a connection with the big little thing too. But I, I don't know, with Susan. Yes, Susan. Right? Yes. Susan, you had two littles. Mm -hmm. Susan was one of your littles, wasn't she? Well, Susan and I were just really good friends. So we Maybe spent that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out, isn't that horrible? I know, I know. But um, it's just really fun to reconnect. Thank you for meeting with me today. Thank I hope you. it's been a good experience. And I hope that all of you have had as much fun as I did. And please tune in next week for the next Mission Driven Monday.